With this flutter and tuning tech tip, we're going to talk about how you can put a 2.5 liter long block into a 2 liter WRX, like our 2003 WRX project car here. Um, first, I'm going to assume for this conversation that you already watched our hybrid spot video and our cylinder head video on the differences between the B and the D25 um, cylinder heads. That information will definitely, hopefully, make this a uh, little bit easier to understand. Um, and I'll tell you also up front that there's a lot of information here, so it's going to be pretty densely packed. But that's why we're making this video, um, give you the opportunity to watch it again, go back, etc. So um, basically, this is our, our 2003 WX project car, and a couple years ago we actually put a 2.5 liter long block into it. Um, and since then, we've helped other people do that conversion. Um, and so the first question is, why does that come up? Well. Largely comes up when you, people start looking at doing a hybrid swap into a 2 liter WRX for a couple of reasons. One, as you've watched the hybrid video, you know that there's, there's some certain issues with the hybrid swap and really the most proper way to correct all of those is to use the proper cylinder head for the 2.5 liter block. So if you, if you really want to 100% remove any chance of having any issues with a hybrid swap, going with the full 2.5 long block is the very best way to go. Um, the other reason is because the 2 liter cylinder heads have a known weakness, which is um, basically where the spark plug enters the combustion chamber here. Um, this is a 2.5 liter head, and Subaru pretty much fixed that problem on the 2.5 heads, but on the 2 liter heads, especially as they get older, the heads are prone to cracking here uh, where the spark plug enters the combustion chamber. And the best practice really is if, if a head is cracked, is to either replace, well, really to replace it. And seeing as the newest 2 liter WRX at this point is about 12 years old, um, and they're getting up there in miles, the likelihood of having those cracks is greater and greater. If you have to replace one head, it's a little bit of a toss up, but if you have to replace both heads, if they're both cracked, that's where I think you really want to look at doing a 2.5 uh, swap because the cost of getting two 2.5 liter head castings and then a few other parts that you need to make it work in your 2 liter is just a little bit more than two new two liter head castings and then again you don't have any of the issues with the, the hybrid swap etc because now I've got a full 2.5 liter long block. Um, but when, you, when people start looking at doing that 2.5 long block the stumbling block that always comes up is the AVCS system. Can you run AVCS? Can you not? If you don't, what parts do you run? What cams do you run? Which cam gears? How do you make it all work? It seems really complicated uh, but the short answer is you cannot run AVCS. So your, your 2 liter WRX ECO does not have the inputs or the processing power to run AVCS. And so once you realize that, it actually simplifies things a lot. And then it's just a matter of picking the right parts to make the, the AVCS 2 liter head work properly with your non-AVCS ECU. And it turns out there's, there's a ton of commonality between the 2 liter and the 2.5 uh, liter heads, and that's what makes this all easy. Um, you know, when we're talking about valve train, like valve springs, retainers, that sort of thing, if you had a perfect brand new 2 liter head and you were so inclined, you could actually move all of those 2 liter components over to the 2.5 liter head. So the valves are the same, the springs, retainers are the same. Um, and so if you're going to upgrade, they're interchangeable. Um, so, so basically all the same options for your 2 liter head would apply to the 2.5 liter head. And if you have good valves, which Again, with the age of that engine, I wouldn't really recommend moving any of that stuff over, but point is that you could. Um, so the next thing is cams. Um, what I have in front of me here is an AVCS cam. Um, you can tell that it's an AVCS cam because it has these openings on the front. This is where the cam would connect to the cam pulley. And on an AVCS car, oil flu flows through these journals, and it, that's the oil pressure that's what drives the AVCS cam pulley. If you're not running AVCS, you would have to plug these. So really, the best answer is you don't want to run an AVCS cam, and there's a few reasons why. Um, first, plugging these holes can be problematic. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of them on each intake cam, and if you have even a pinhole leak in one of them, because oil is coming through here under high pressure, you're going to have a pretty reasonable oil leak, and that means you're going to have to go back and figure out some better way to plug it, and that can be a lot of work after you've just put your engine back in. Um, two is the AVCS and the non-AVCS cams both have this indexing pin. This pin controls how the valve uh, 
sorry, the lobe orients with the cam pulley itself. Um, the thing is, with an AVCS cam, the way that the AVCS cam pulley works is the oil pressure drives the inside of the cam and it will actually move back and forth to change the phasing of the intake cams. Because of that, this actually has a different centerline location if you put it into a non-AVCS cam pulley compared to the non-AVCS cam. If you were to put this non-AVCS, I'm sorry, this AVCS cam into a non-AVCS cam pulley, what you end up with is basically the default high RPM setting if you're running AVCS. So you end up actually losing a good deal of low and mid-range power because the phasing is wrong of the AVCS cam. Um, the other reason you would run a non-AVCS cam is there's really not that much difference. If you compare a 2 liter uh, non-AVCS cam to this AVCS cam, the duration is exactly the same. The only difference is you have one millimeter more lift with this AVCS cam compared to the non-AVCS cam. So only sacrificing that one millimeter of lift but gaining the proper centerline orientation for your non-AVCS cam pulley that's where running a non-AVCS cam is absolutely the way to go if you're doing this swap. Um, and if you're looking at aftermarket cams, still, non-AVCS is the way to go. Um, for instance, what we used is a GSC Stage 1 non-AVCS cam. Um, that way you don't have to, anything to deal with uh, oil leaks and then the center line is correct. So, you know, as I alluded to there, the the next question is what cam pulley can you run? Well, you cannot run the AVCS cam pulley. If you don't have oil pressure to hold it in place, it's going to float. And that can cause a lot of tuning and drivability issues. You just don't want to go there. So you need to run the AVCS, um, sorry, the non-AVCS cam pulley. And there's another good reason for that. On the non-AVCS cars, you have one cam position sensor, and it reads off of these markings on the back of the driver's side intake cam. So you have to run the non-AVCS intake cams for your cam position sensor to function properly. Um, there's another wrinkle to that, which is the uh, on the non-AVCS heads, the cam position sensor attaches to a bracket that is part of the head, but that bracket is not on the uh, 2.5 liter heads. That's why Cosworth made this cam angle sensor bracket. This cam angle sensor bracket bolts to the front two bolts on the um, cam cap and this is where your cam position sensor will attach so you would run the non-AVCS cams, non-AVCS cam pulleys and then this Cosworth cam angle sensor bracket so that you can then attach your cam position sensor so that your EC will read the correct uh, cam position input. Now the as I was saying the AVCS heads, there's actually two cam position sensors and they actually read off of the back of each cam. Because of that, there's a hole right here on each head that the cam position sensors go in. If you're getting used heads, um, you just can certainly just leave the, the sensors in place that plugs that hole. Then, then you don't have any kind of an oil leak. But if you don't, IEG has made these plugs that have a nice little O-ring here and so you can install these instead and that will seal that hole in, uh, in the AVCS head. So, so we're putting in the non-AVCS cams, running the non-AVCS cam pulleys. Um, of course, because we're running non-AVCS pulleys and cams, we would run the non-AVCS cam seals. There's only two different cam seals, AVCS and non-AVCS. And since we're doing everything non-AVCS, the non-AVCS seals are the, one, the ones that we would use. Um, the last really important part of information is the AVCS lines and solenoids. Even though we're not running AVCS, you have to leave the AVCS lines and the solenoids in place. The reason for that is on these 2.5 liter heads, the oil flow that goes to the front cam journals is from that AVCS line and solenoid. If you would try and delete those, you would actually end up running the uh, front cam journals dry and most likely the uh, the cams would seize in the cylinder head. So even though we're not running AVCS, you still have to run the AVCS lines and solenoids. Um, the last other thing, it's just basically as a footnote, but is the valve covers. There's a slight difference in the valve covers. Um, obviously they're different between the 2 liter and the 2.5 liter, but the big difference is that there's two inputs on the 2.5 liter and there's only one on the 2 liters. What that is, on the 2 liters there's one that basically goes into the PVC, PVC system. On the 2.5 liters, the second opening 
and it basically connects to the center crankcase breather that is present on the 2.5 liter block that is not there on the 2 liter block. And basically the two cylinder heads tee into that fitting. The, the factory routing um, actually connects those through uh, a hard line that bolts right on top of the water uh, or a coolant crossover pipe. But you definitely want, when, you, when you're doing the 2.5 liter swap, you definitely want to preserve that connection. You don't want to run all of that into the BC, PCV system. Um, if you would run that into the PCV system, there's a lot more liquid oil there and you can have a lot more oil consumption. Um, and basically what the purpose of that second fitting on the valve cover is, is to balance the pressure between the valve covers and the cylinder block itself. So you want to retain that as close to 2.5 liter factory routing. Um, but really beyond that, once you, once you install all those non-EVCS parts and components and put it into the car, you just from that point tune it as normal because you, you have your uh, standard cam position sensor and input so your tuner can just tune it as normal you just have a 2.5 liter instead of a 2 liter so it is it is complicated but that's why we wanted to make this video we get a lot of questions and we're trying to to give you guys a resource so that you can you know go back watch it again and hopefully uh, clarify any questions you might have and um, you know answer a lot of those questions so um, hopefully you found this helpful if you did please drop a like uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Flatirons Tuning Tech Tips.